everyone and welcome to Arissa Gets It Together. I'm Arissa and this week I'll be talking about how I'm going to read all of the books I own. So yeah, today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour and kind of talking about both how I organize my books and how I'm going to somehow read all of them eventually. I went ahead and counted. I have one bookshelf in my room. I used to be that girl that literally had, I think my bedroom when I went off to college had like seven bookshelves in it of varying sizes and agedness. I definitely had like close to a thousand books. Every time I went to the library, they had this nice little like old bookshelf store that had like 10 cents copies of books on them, like old library books. And I would leave with a bag full of them and I would never read them. Okay, sometimes I read them, but I just like hoarded books. It was a problem, we're working through it. So you're gonna say, oh, it's a wow, you're the book girl and you're a literal librarian, you only own X amount of books. Yes, and that's healthy. I get rid of books now. If I don't love them, I don't keep them. I A, don't have the space. B, moving is a wow when you have a lot of books, right? No one likes to do it, so I don't do it anymore. I live in a neighborhood, super cute, and around the corner there's a condominium complex and in front of it there's a little free library. I walk past it every day on my way to and from work and I will just drop a book in there after I finish reading it if I don't wanna keep it. It's very freeing. However, there's another person who lives in this neighborhood who has very similar taste in books as I do. So I often also pick up a book from that Little, little free library, it's a real issue. But that's not what this is about. This is about the books I have and the books I'm going to read. So first I will talk to you about how I organize my bookshelf. It is built into my wall. I did not build it in, don't worry. It's four high, but I only use the top three just because I use the bottom for shoes or whatever. Apartment living, am I right? Um, so. I have three shelves basically full. They're pretty deep, so I do do two stacks, sometimes three if I can swing it. And let's get started. First, some numbers. Um, this is just the physical books. I'm not counting Kindle books or all the digital arcs that I have because that's overwhelming and I don't want to think about it. I have 56 physical books, not from the library, like books I own and possess and legally can sell and all that jazz. Um, 56 books that I have not read and intend to read. There are also, there's also like a couple series that I want to reread, like the Privilege series by Kate Bryan and the Selection series by Kiera Cass. Kiera Cass. Um, I want to reread those, those are, but I've read them and I own them, so I'm not counting them as unread. And then I have 122 books that I have read and own. That includes a good, like, 20 Babysitter's Club books, because last year I decided I was going to start recollecting all of them. That's a pipe dream, because there are a heck ton, like 200 of them. But I have 20 right now. I also own um, six copies of Little Women, two copies of The Secret History, two copies of The Westing Game, and then some series that I really like, like Morgan Crow, The Thousandth Floor, American Royals, and stuff like that. So those are books I've read and the only reason I keep them is because I love them. They are the beginning of a series that I want to wait until I have the whole series to decide what to do with or they are classic novels that I as a former English major just feel like I have to keep like all the Jane Austens, The Great Gatsby, Tale of Two Cities, things like that. I mostly organize it on these two right here. This is the shelf of books I have read. And this is the shelf of books I need to read. The shelf up there just kind of catches the rest. Obviously I've read the Twilight series and those um, six copies of Little Women. And then I also have some of my like grad school textbooks and stuff back there. That's just kind of a catch-all shelf. I usually focus on these two shelves. Let's start on the shelf of books I have read because that means I actually like these books or found them important enough to keep. You can see all my Babysitter's Club books, the Selection series, yes, that is the Alpha series, uh, the spinoff from the Click series. 
I have the entire Click series back in Kentucky in a box, kept safe and sound. Two copies of my favorite, The Westing Game. Um, two copies of Nevermore. Um, the Prince and the Dressmaker, which is actually the book that got me started on graphic novels. Love and Other Words, my absolute favorite Christina Lauren book. And that one is signed. So as you can see, I do it like too deep. And then I also stick books in the middle here. So we've got a Rainbow Rail graphic novel, uh, the Allie Carter Gallagher Girls series, which I apparently got at Goodwill. Wild Things, one of my favorite nonfiction books. Um, some more graphic novels. The classic Meg Cabot Teen Idol. Um, the entire Private series by Kate Bryan is back there. That's a whole decision. So I do Book of the Month Club, but I usually either trade them on the Facebook group or I put them in a little free library. So right now I have four that I have read and kept. The Secret History is one of my favorite books of all time, so definitely traded for that one because I still have a paperback copy, which is the one I first read. The Last Flight I still have because we are using it for a book club book in August. I will probably trade it afterwards. Uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue I just really loved, and this is the only hard copy of it, hardcover copy of, of it, I mean. And then Happen, you know it, I was going to trade and then I was going to give it away, but I really, really liked it, so I'm going to keep it a little bit longer. Ninth House, uh, both I loved it because it's set at my alma mater, and I want to keep it until I get the rest in the series. The Thousandth Floor series by Catherine McGee, just loved them. Same with her American Royals book. I also have the se the sequel and the final book in that duology, Majesty, coming out. I really like the selection series, and I liked Betrothed well enough, even though it got some pretty awful reviews. So I have the first in that series. And then these three are arcs of some of my favorite books, including Fall is Fair, which is a Macbeth retelling, Catherine House, which is, I, I can't even put into words how good it is, and of Curses and Kisses, which is Beauty and the Beast set at a boarding school. Now let's move on to all the books I haven't read. Well, I have read the Privilege series, which is a spinoff of Private, but I want to reread it and I don't have a lot of room up there, so it's been living down here. Uh, these are the only two Judy Bacolt books I haven't read, and I've been toting them around for years and still haven't read them. Whoops. Uh, the Night Circus, I haven't read yet either, but I'm really excited to because I really like The Starless Sea. Down here we have some of the Book of the Month Club books I haven't read. I bought Ladder to the Sky to give as a Christmas gift like a year or two ago and ended up giving them something else. Still got to get to that. The Wicked Saints I've heard really good things about, but I have fantasy fears. Big Friendship looks really good, and look how thin it is. I should read that soon. Um, I have the first two books in the Shades of Magic series, and I should probably get the third. But I could also just check it out from the library, if I ever got around to that. The Skype series by Neil Schusterman have been meaning to read this trilogy since the last one came out in November because I hate waiting for the next book but I still haven't read them yet whoops more books I've been meaning to read including the new Sarah J Mass whoops um Warm Peace another book I've been carrying around for it forever similarly with Outlander and Visit from the Goon Squad I've just had those literal the physical copies for so long Ooh. over here so I talked about how much I love the secret history over here, I have the only Donna Tart book I haven't read, The Little Friend. And again, kind of thick, so I'll get around to it when I get around to it. This is my to-read shelf. I'm not going to go into all of them, but every month I try to read at least, like, half of the books I'm reading be physical books I own. It's not always, doesn't always happen just because I have a lot of arcs to get through and sometimes... I just fall behind, but like all these books I bought for a reason or got for a reason. So I should probably read them. Like I said before, I really utilize the little free library near me. So some of the ones I found from there include Where the Crawdads Sing, which I've been meaning to read for forever. The Mars Room, 
Love in the Time of Cholera, Moment of Lift. I can't remember if I found Miracle Creek there or not. Um, definitely found Founding Brothers back there from there and the Anne Fadiman book. A couple of these I either want on Goodreads or just requested the publisher from, or requested from the publisher, like this one that I'm so excited about. Plain Bad Heroines by Emily Danforth. I cannot wait to read this and hopefully I uh, do soon. I know it's only up to me, but I have let myself down before. So because I'm absolutely crazy, I have a huge board in my room. It's actually covering just some unsightly like mechanical stuff that needs hidden, but I keep what I want to read on a list over here and I get to erase it as it's gone. Obviously I have already read and seen some stuff this month. I actually rewrote the to read list the other day just because it was a little out of order. Um, I'm really excited for these books. I'm reading To Sleep in a Sea of Stars right now. This is August in case that wasn't clear. And then I usually redo this at the beginning of the month. And then I keep a small stack over here of the physical books I'm reading soon, just so I have more room on my shelf. My desk is kind of a mess right now because I'm getting new succulents and like putting things away. But these are some of the books I'll be reading the rest of the month. I'm really excited about What You Wish For because it has a librarian character. Woo! So now let's talk about my ARC situation. So ARCs, A-R-Cs, are advanced reader copies and they're given by publishers to people like librarians and book reviewers and booktubers and stuff who will promote the book. So they're not really like some people think they are. Like the, the publisher doesn't give it to me, a lowly librarian, for my deep critical insights into whether the book is good or not. By the time it's an A-R-C, it's like, hope you like this book and want to promote it. Not like, did you find any typos? Did you like the love interest? Like that's not really what ARCs are for. Just FYI. But I get approved for pretty much every digital arc I request now, which you're thinking, wow, that's so cool. It's a trap. It's a trap I walk into daily, but it is a trap. Just download them with the intention of reading them one day. And I do get around to a lot of them, but then it's all of a sudden September and like 700 of them are coming out all at once and it's very overwhelming. So I have some arcs right now on my Kindle Right now, as I film this, I'm reading an arc of the new Christopher Paolini book. He wrote um, Aragon, why did that take me so long? Wow, the Aragon Saga, I think the Inheritance Cycle it was called, because um, there were more than three books, I promised. It is 880 pages. It comes out September 15th, and it is really stressful to me how long this book is. It's really good. It's like a space opera kind of thing, which I don't normally read. I'm really liking it, but it's so long. I also have arcs of the new Sanda Menon book. Actually, she's published under Lily Menon. It's her first like adult romance. I'm really excited. It's called Makeup Breakup and I wanna read it right away. But, and here's the problem, it doesn't come out until February, 2021. You know what I should probably read first? The arc of the new Ruth Ware book that comes out in like two weeks. Yeah, I try to keep a calendar of arcs that I know I'm like reading them in order, but I'm such a mood reader. So I like to like alternate. Like I'm not gonna read like five romance novels in a row or like five fantasy. I don't read a lot of fantasy, TBH. So I want to like mix up what I read. So like the new Courtney Summers book, The Project, I really wanna read that, but I'm gonna wait until I read like several romance novels and I'm too happy and then I'm gonna read it and let, me, let it take me to the pits again. 